Hey, everybody. Welcome back. What about Wednesday? Yes, we've got a bunch of people that's been sitting in here. And I'm watching you guys here on YouTube waiting. Some very waiting dedicated people. To, we love yeah. it. We appreciate it. Because we have a really exciting show today. We do. We do. We have livestock going into the frag. We've got a worldwide coral gift card giveaway. Mm -hmm. We've got the frag giveaway that's going on through the series towards yep. the end. Um, you know, it's a very exciting day. Yeah. Like, like share, <laughs> subscribe, hit the notifications, you guys, because we're here every single week. Um, so let's roll that intro. <laughs> Always a good intro. Love yes. it every week. Love welcome it. Welcome everyone. It. Welcome, welcome. There's more people joining every second. I love it. All right, so we got lots going on. We well, do. One of the first things is we have a Worldwide Coral $25 gift card yep. that we are giving away this episode, and um, he's got it there. I'll yep. show you. <laughs> here we go. We got it here live with us in the studio. You guys got to stick around until the end for this, though, because we've got some really good educational stuff coming with today. We're going to show you. We're going to be adding fish to the tank. We're going to be talking about the doser that we've installed last week. Yes. I believe it was last week. Maybe it was the week before. We're like week seven right now. Is there, it is week seven. Seven of ten. Only this is getting towards left. the end. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. But it's all the fun stuff. This is when we got fish going. Corals are coming soon. Um, the tank has been up in cycles for a couple yeah. weeks now. We put inverts in last week. Um, so things are really rolling along. Yeah. And um, if anyone hasn't already tuned in for these or know what's going on with this, we've got um, a giveaway associated with the whole series. Yes, you guys, you guys. If you don't know already, then you're, uh, you're hiding under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> but you still have time. <laughs> yes. So if you guys head over to waterboxaquariums.com, not only in the USA, but in Europe and the UK, Boom. you can go to waterboxaquariums.com. Up top, you're going to see a little blue banner. Um, you're going to click on that, and once you click on that, you're going to head over to the landing page, which is where you can sign up. You can put your email address in, and then there's a number of social actions involved as well. There you can see it up on the screen. Put your information in, and then you can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, visit our website, and do the same thing for Worldwide Corals that is sponsoring this build. Um, and you're going to get entered. Every one of those is an entry to win a frag. Uh, plus XR. So that's the frag system, including the Ecotech Marine Radeon lighting, which is huge. Awesome. So that's a huge, wonderful, awesome, great giveaway. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, do all the actions for that. And, you know, we are now for today and the rest of the episodes going to have a gift card every single week yep. from Worldwide um, because they're doing the fish and corals for this build. So uh, yep. multiple chances to win cool stuff. Um, it's been a lot of fun and we're finally getting to the point of Fish. adding the fish and stuff so we went to worldwide to go check out the retail they have their superstore this place is massive um and we're gonna you know show that to you we got to pick out our fish that are yeah. in um today so it's been, it was a, we lot got of a little bit of, we got a video here for you guys we want you to check it out check it out if you haven't been to worldwide this video is going to be a treat amazing store it's about six minutes long so we'll see you after that Hey guys, we're at Worldwide Corals today to pick out some fish for the Frag 105.4. Can't wait to see what we're going to get. If guys, if you have not been to Worldwide Corals here in Central Florida, you got to make the trip down. It's absolutely stunning. Let's head on inside. Worldwide Corals and this is Joe and he's going to show us around the store. Welcome in guys. So here to start we have our 1200 gallon lagoon. It's been set up since about August of last year. It's a mixed LPS, mixed reef, got SPS as well as softies as always. Um, it houses about 40 to 50 fish right now and it's uh, pretty much our pride and joy in the biggest tank we have as far as uh, length. It's uh, 10 feet 10 inches each direction. Wow, this is definitely a huge showstopper when someone yep. walks in the door. Sure, yeah, I love it. I mean, it's it's amazing. You got the mangrove in the back, it's yep. loaded with corals, and it also gives you that really cool vantage point uh, from the top down as well as from the front. Yep, it, it definitely awesome. sticks out. And the mangrove is about nine years old, so it's uh, it's rooted, it's seeded, wow. it's doing really good. That nice. is awesome. Love it. Yeah. 
as you can see, there is water boxes everywhere, and we have a beautiful wall of Ecotech AI water box set up. Let's check it out. Yep. So if you come over here, we have our black 100.3 uh, set up similar to the Lagoon as a mixed reef. Uh, some SPS, but mostly LPS, softies, with uh, just uh, regular sand in this tank. And it's going to be lit by all this Ecotech equipment that's uh, right here for sale. And this one is our uh, AI lit uh, 100.3. This is uh, using a branch rock. And we have reborn media on the bottom to change it up, something a little different. And this will be primarily SPS. And this is lit by the Hydra 32s and powered with the Nero 5s. Guys, what I love about this store, which you can see here, is that they have the Ecotech Radions and the, the AI. So if you want to do the plus, uh, HD edition or XR edition, you come into Worldwide Corals and do that. Plus, they're loaded with water box tanks. They got the cubes, they got the big tanks, they got the pros, the reefs, whatever you want. If you want to pick up a water box, this is a place to do it. Plus, they offer financing. You see here now we have the coral systems where you can purchase your corals here. We're going to check that out next week when it's time to add corals to the FRAG 105.4. here today is to pick out our first fish for the FRAG 105 build. So when you come in here, they've got it divided into a couple different sections. You've got your inverts and then you've got your basically kind of like your community reef safe type of fish selection here. They're of course help guide you towards the right selection for your aquarium. So we are going to pick out and see what we're going to put in the FRAG today. So Joe, tell us yep. a little bit about your fish and how you're making sure that you're getting basically healthy fish to your customers. Yeah, absolutely. So you know we buy from reputable vendors, which you know goes a long shot for most stores. And you'll see here all the fish are medicated right now in copper. And about twice a month we flush out the system with uh, Prazi, and then you know keep the copper at a therapeutic level for all the fish to stay nice. happy and healthy. Very nice. You're making sure that they're eating before they go yep. home with anyone. Yep, we um, feed all the fish before you know they're taken for sale. And you know, we check for you know cloudy eyes, rip fins, anything like that. We'll move to the back to another medicated system. Awesome, very very cool. So like uh, Joe and Jess said, you guys, they have tons of fish, tons of inverts. Um, if you're setting up a reef tank, this is where you want to come to pick out your fish. Joe, how big is your fish system? All your different ones combined. Yep. So the main fish system out here is about 700 gallons total, and then our invertebrate system on the end is about 300 gallons. Wow, thousand gallons worth of place for you to select your fish and corals and stuff here. Yep. So if someone comes in, um, a lot like we are doing here, we've got our tank up and running, it's cycled, how do you help guide them towards picking their first round of fish that should go in? Yep, so once the cycle's complete and you know the tank's doing well, you know, you always want to look for to make sure algae's starting to grow on the rocks and that's a good sign that you're ready for fish. So, you know, we're going to recommend smaller fish to start that are easier, hardier to take care of, you know, before introducing anything too large that can become aggressive if added too early. Okay, so if someone has added fish to their aquarium and it's been, you know, setting up and they want to come and add some more. Yep. Like how do you guide them to make sure they're picking the ones that are appropriate for their size tank and also what they already have in there? Yeah, so once the customer's coming in, you know, they'll, you know, develop a relationship with all our associates. We'll get to know their tank as well as they do. And, you know, we'll make sure all the selections are proper for their size aquarium as well as, you know, the temperament with the other fish as well. That's awesome. So, yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And what's something that, you know, people should look for in a healthy fish? Yeah. So with healthy fish, uh, the biggest thing when you're ready to purchase is, you know, have the fish fed and make sure it's eating. That's usually the telltale sign that the fish is ready to go home. Also check, you know, make sure the eyes aren't cloudy, make sure there's no rip fins, and see how it reacts with other fish in the same tank. You know, make sure it's not shy, hiding under the rocks, make sure, it, you know, it's you know, ready to go home. Yeah, awesome. Good deal. Speaking of fish, so you've picked out a few that are going to be some that are going into the frag. Yep. What have you picked out? Yeah, so we'll show you the first batch of fish uh, we set aside. We've got a nice pair of captive red clowns. These are uh, some really nice Picassos. And we have a couple Bangai Cardinals, uh, Royal Grandma, and a small Pygmy Hawk will be the first good batch to get you going. Awesome. So yeah, those being, are great yeah. fish for especially the beginners, too. Yep. They're really easy yep. to keep. Party yep. and the yep. cardinals are captive bred as well, so you know they're resilient and ready, ready for home aquarium. Life. Yep, and they're all awesome. small, so that's good. So going into the tank, you know it's cycled, it's still new. Correct. You know it's not going to be a big bio load. They're all very peaceful, so they're not going to be aggressive towards new things coming in as we add them. So it's yep. a really good selection to get started with for the frag. Yep, it's a good place to start. Awesome.
such a beautiful place. It yes. was a great place. If you haven't been, if you're anywhere in the area of Central Florida, you've got to check it out. Um, it's one of the biggest places I've mm -hmm. been into, which is really nice. Full salt water. Um, definitely a treat. Yeah, I, I, I hate to say it, but it was the first time I've been there since they built a new store. I've been watching these guys over the years. We both started here in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, our companies, and you know, I've seen them from the very beginning. They've come such a long way. If you go to WorldwideCorals.com, you can actually see like the progression of their different stores. It's pretty neat. Yeah. And so we got fish. We did. And they have been acclimating, so they're going to be ready to get into the tank. Um, and finally have their new home and the frag's going to have some stuff swimming around. That's going to be awesome. So let's go check it out. Yeah, you guys can see it there uh, on the shot right now. Is tank is cleared up. It's looking really, really nice. We also got our new fishy friends in the tank right next to it that you can see there in the shot. And Jess is going to give us a rundown on what fish we picked out. Yeah, so we've been drip acclimating them for about 45 minutes. I took the tubing out like right before we started the show because um, we also want to be careful how much water we drain out of the tank. So anytime you're acclimating the fish and you're taking water from your aquarium, make sure you either turn your auto top off off or have salt water there to compensate for what's being removed because you're taking out salt, you don't want your ATO to just put fresh water back in. It can mess with your salinity level, especially on a smaller tank. So we just did our usual drip lines. If you haven't seen these before um, on a lot of our other uh, shows or whatever, is this is actually airline tubing. Um, you can go fancy. There's some companies that make them just for drip line. I tie a little knot in the end, depending on how much uh, flow you need. And whenever you put it down, it is basically dripping into. And you can just tighten or loosen the knot, and it depends on how fast you want to go. And you usually want to double the water volume of the water that they came in, so that they're getting temperature, salinity, all that stuff is um, even in their use to Just it. how long do you want to wait, or how long should that water volume double? Like, how long do you need to? Um, usually, a lot of times the fish, I go for like 45 minutes. Okay. Um, it's just a good round number. There is an exact science to it, but just letting them get used to your parameters versus theirs. You'll also see that we have fish in one container and then we have our shrimp in another. And this is because, uh, like Joe had said, they run a medication through their fish system. And with inverts like shrimp and crabs and snails, you can't have that medication in with them. It will actually kill them. So remember yeah, when you are... the inverts from the fish. Yes, when you are acclimating, put them in separate containers, acclimate them separately, and then also never take the water from your fish, especially, and put that into the tank. You're always going to want to net them out. Yeah, and I'm going to repeat that, you guys. Do not put the water that uh, your fish come in in your tank. You know, separate them from that water with a net or something like that. Right. I even say because, like, even with the, like, water, if you get snails and crabs and shrimp and stuff like that, the water in the bag is no medication in it, but it's still, you don't know exactly what, you know, their parameters are. Yeah. Um, nutrients and stuff. So why even add that to your tank that you're keeping a close eye on all this stuff? So we have our shrimp. I'm going to add them in first. So we got some cleaner shrimp. These guys are going to be just, they're going to clean up fish food and fish waste around here. They're also going to actually um, clean your fish of parasites, dead scales, that kind of stuff. They are a lot of fun to watch as well. And a lot of times you'll even find that they will, if you put your hand in the water, they'll actually come yeah. and clean your hand. It's awesome. <laughs> So I'm going to net them out, just real gentle, and then, you know, just help them out. Put them right next to the rock. And those guys are in. Such a cool little shrimp. They're, they're uh, in the wild, they just, they basically, they're cleaner shrimp, right? They clean off the mm -hmm. different, like, parasites and things like that off of fish. What's interesting is you'll see a fish that would typically eat a shrimp as a snack actually swim up to one of these guys and let them clean it, get into their mouth and clean yes. them all out. It's pretty crazy. You'll see these huge groupers or something and there's a cleaner shrimp, a whole bunch of them just mm -hmm. jumping all inside their mouth, basically cleaning their teeth and like yeah. all this crazy stuff. Um, so they actually like sh shrimp have a spot that they always kind of stay in and that's a cleaning station and fish yeah. actually come up to them, kind of go on their sides, say hey, go ahead and clean me, get the job done and they swim off. So they're actually really useful and they're a lot of fun to watch. So those guys are in. They're not shy. They're pretty much just out as soon as you put them in, which is great. Fish are not always that easy. So we got a pair of clownfish. These guys are very fancy. They're beautiful. The amount of black on them, they're very nice and mature. The, uh, the, the, they're loving the clownfish, by the way. They're, they're saying they're, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. A lot of people so with this, because there's some medication in the water that they come in, you do want to kind of gently shake them and then you know, so just not transfer 
really any of the water because you just don't want possible medication or anything getting into your tank because that's going to be um, a bit of a hassle. So clownfish are a great starter fish, super hardy. Um, everyone loves them. There's a ton of different patterns now that there are aquacultured and designer clowns. Um, you know, so a great fish to get started with with any pretty much any size aquarium, 10, 20 gallons and up. Yeah. Clownfish are great yeah. to get started with. Yeah, great, great fish. And I love the fact that they're aquacultured. And they are um, not shy at all. They're not shy. That's great. They're loving it. They're like, ooh, look at all this and tons of space from this one. And they get to basically be like the kings from the beginning. Yeah. Next in here is we've got some Bangai Cardinals. These guys are aquacultured, so which is really good um, environmentally. Same with the clownfish. And that also means they are very well adjusted to captive food and life. Um, Bangai's from the wild have actually become endangered. So aquaculture is the best bet with these guys. Yeah, when these, you buy a Bangai, definitely make sure they're cultured. That's a yeah, big they're deal. very hard to get wild anyway, but you don't want to get them wild because it is just not beneficial for the wild populations. These guys here um, can be in groups. They will breed in your aquarium pretty easily. Um, raising the babies is different. But you know you can do with singles or groups. They're really just kind of a very funky looking fish. Generally will eat about anything. Super hardy. So another good beginner. And they'll generally stay together for the most part. Mm -hmm. So we got like two little pairs, pair off of fish in here. I'm and surprised how <clears> none of these fish so far have been shy. Yeah, they're not shy at all. They're just, I don't know, I guess they like to be on camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> These the fish other, are not camera shy. Yeah, the next two probably will be a little bit more shy. That's a little bit of their nature. So one is a Royal Brahma. This is a one you're going to see a lot of places um, and highly recommended as a beginner fish. I they, love them. Jess. They're hardy, um, super bright color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. I think pretty much any tank you've done, you've always put a royal grama I'm into. I'm just it. a big fan of them. I, I had one for many, many years. I think I, I kept them for about eight or nine years, well, something like right that. Goes right to him. that way. No, don't go that way. Keep an eye on them when you first go in because he's doing his <laughs> own thing. Um, we did make a lid as well for this. We used the DNG jump guard. Yeah. Um, we'll show you that when we put all the fish in. But yeah, so. We're not as lucky with those. They tend to be a little shy sometimes, I've noticed. Like, they'll go hide, and, and they might even hide for a week or so before they kind of get used to coming out and being fed. Royal grandmas are in the basslet family, and basslets are generally more of a cave-dwelling um, fish. So a lot of times you'll find that they'll stay in the same area of the rock. They're not as out and about as some of your things like clownfish. Um, royal grandmas don't tend to be the most shy of all the basslets, so um, usually you get to see them quite a bit. This guy is a pretty unusual one. You don't see these yeah, around too often. Yeah, this is a pretty often. interesting fish, you, you, like you said, that I have not it's, seen in yeah. a long time. This is a geometric pygmy hawk. They call him a pygmy hawk, but he's actually in the Antheus family. Um, but he completely behaves like a hawkfish. These guys stay pretty small. They're not aggressive towards inverts like a lot of your hawkfish are. Um, and they're pretty much just adorable. So, and he shouldn't yeah, be shy really once he fish. settles in. Probably shy a little bit in the beginning. Looks a lot like a perchlet kind of anthias mix. Are you going off to hide? They both like this a lot. <laughs> they both are <laughs> finding the same. I'm going to let them settle in and hopefully those two will come out uh, for us before we step away from the tank today. But so we have actually been, um, we tested the water once again for like the ammonia and all that stuff. Everything's good. Uh, of course, that's why we went ahead and added some fish. But we also tested for like alkalinity of calcium and magnesium because we set up the Versa. Um, those levels are perfectly fine because there's nothing uptaking. We mm -hmm. don't have any corals in here. There's nothing really using that. So at this point, we don't need to dose yet. Yeah. We're going to be testing every single week to see once those levels start to drop, especially since next week is when we add corals. And we'll put the doser into um, the Mobius and get it dosing. Yeah, so then. guys, we, we did intend on showing you that this week, and we are going to push that to next week because, like Jess said, our levels are looking good. We don't have anything, like she said, uptaking it, so I was going to demonstrate that today. We're going to push it a week um, at the very least to where we actually really need to be dosing. Um, you know, this is a live show, so we can't script a lot of it, so we just don't <laughs> need it to happen, so we're going to push it out a little bit. We can bit. pretend to dose, but why yeah. um, We don't need it yet, so, but I do want to show you kind of how we set up the tubing. It was really, really easy. Um, we've made yeah. it really, really clean looking, and I, one thing I really like about the Versa is most dosing systems that have been out there use like a specialized size tubing. 
really hard to get. You can't really just find it anywhere. Um, yep, the definitely. Versa actually uses regular like RODI tubing. Um, it's standard size. You can get it at a hardware store. They sell it. It's the same stuff that you get for RO units. Um, and it makes it really easy because it's rigid and it's compatible. Like it's easy to find. Yeah, You're not it's finding just regular quarter inch RO tubing. Yep. You can color code them if you want. Mm -hmm. um, we just kind of went with, we're going with a kind of like black theme. We yeah. wanted it to blend in real nice. So what I did is we have our dosing containers here and we've got our uptake and I used the RODI tubing going here and it's just a quick like push connect. Um, and here you got your dose and then what we're doing is I actually got the 90 degree elbows and you can get all these things with the Versa as accessories and going straight back through the control board just to keep it really clean. All mm -hmm. the cords and stuff are out of the way. Then I have those lines going around the back and into a tubing holder. You don't want them to just like free hang into the sump because they um, they could fall out then you start dosing. That could be very dangerous. And you also <laughs> want to make sure where they're going into the sump is somewhere that they're getting mixed pretty well because you don't want it dumping um, in a stagnant area, sometimes like alkaline and calcium will actually like uh, solidify if it's not like mixed up properly. And put it right where the baffle is going to the pump, so it's going to get a good mix before it goes into the tank. So you're not putting any straight additives up into there. So we'll get that set up and going once we actually have the need for a little bit of calcium, alkaline, and magnesium to go in the tank. Which hopefully next week or the week after, we're yeah. going corals and stuff in, we'll start to see a little bit of difference. And we actually have. Some fish food that Worldwide Corals gave us. They actually have a little reef mix with their well known uh, albino tang, little Casper, oh, yeah, thing is Casper or whatever yeah. on there. Yep. Um, if you guys it haven't seen that, you got to look that up. Reefroids and stuff like that mixed in. Yeah, so if you guys want to pick up, uh, they do it. Worldwide Corals has a frozen fish food at their store as well. But as you saw that fish on there, I want to show them again. Um, the white tang. If you guys haven't seen this fish, look at how unbelievable that is. That's a yellow tang that is completely like a stark hybrid, white. Yep. Yeah, it's a, so they have that at their store and their big, the really big tank that's in the back of the store. So it's pretty cool to check out. All right, so we're going to feed a little bit, see if these guys want to come out, let them know that they've got an awesome place to live now. And like I said, we do want to be really careful with our feeding. We don't want to do too much in the beginning. We just added livestock. We're going to continue to add bacteria just to make sure everything stays really stable. And I would say in general, you know, five fish being added, nope, six, I can't count. Um, five, six fish is, you know, a decent amount to add in the very beginning. But we've been doing this a long time. Go a little bit slower at your own pace. Um, you know, we're monitoring this regularly. We've been cycling it, so. They're feeling nice and shy today. <laughs> I would be surprised if they would eat right off the bat. We wanted to see if they would. Yep. Has anybody Bang taken guys, anything? There we go. Oh, there you go. Bang guys and clowns are like, okay. They don't really seem They're to care about much. The other two will take a day or two until they start kind of feeling more comfortable. Those are just naturally a little bit more shy. So, And then the shrimp and all that. You can see the crabs already running. They're sprinting <laughs> across that sand to find the food. I smell food. <laughs> all right. And then so I'm going to take these off of here. Put it in the air. So guys, like Jess said, we did, we do not want any of these fish to jump out. One of the things that we see a lot um, in our user group and just in general with water boxes, you know, they don't come stock with a lid. So we chose to use the D&D jump guard, which is now actually available on waterboxaquariums.com. Mm -hmm. um, Jess put this thing together. It's kind of like a DIY. It comes with all the uh, components. Um, and you basically cut it to size, put the mesh in there, you're ready to go. So it's actually yep. a really sleek looking lid once it's on the tank. It's really you don't easy, lose the rimless. Effective. Yeah, yeah and you it's don't lose the protect. rimless look at all. So it's a little fine tuning I probably need to do on it, but I built this yesterday. I was like, ah, oh, I really need to do that <laughs> since fish are coming tomorrow. Yeah. There we go. But you can see once it's on there, it, it really does blend in a lot. And, you know, even from looking straight from the front you don't really notice it's there very much because it kind of sits in recessed so pretty cool lid there's there lots of different go. lid options on the market this is what we offer uh with water box we actually have them on all of our tanks here in the office as well right it's a good easy you know way to do it you can go get custom lids and stuff that's always all of course an option but this is a really nice um, they're surprisingly cost effective too just they are. Yeah. even like i think <laughs> all the way up to our biggest six foot tank they're only going to run you 
maybe around like $130. Is that right? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't look at those every day. Oh, yeah, I believe it's like under $200, well under $200 for the largest size. And that's with um, the cutouts and all that stuff, yeah. yeah. And we include the uh, cutout kits that you need if you have the Plus Edition, whether it's the XR or the HD. Um, Looks good. We have some fish swimming in here, thankfully. We're going to head back to the studio because we have a couple of things to give away. Just we're giving away a gift card as well as some swag. Woo! Um, so, but you got to stick around for that. Because first, we are... Those clowns gonna... are so cute. They look really, really good. So, very yeah. excited to they see were, some fish the, from the around there. The chat has been loving the clowns. Good, very good. All right. I'll wait for Keenan to make his way back in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got the gift card. We got a shirt to give away. Lots of fun stuff. We get to go and pick out corals for next week's show, which, I mean, I know everyone's really excited to have corals. Fish are fun, but corals yeah. get people very, very excited to watch and stuff like that. I already spotted some stuff down there that I really want to put in this tank. There's so much beautiful stuff, and we have to, like, you know, pace ourselves because we're trying to do this as realistic as possible, too. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit faster than we may, um, you know, do it at a home aquarium, but still making sure that everything's healthy and we don't yeah, you know, we risk have, the stability of the aquarium. Yeah, you guys, we're, again, we're, we're doing this in a 10-week span. By all means, take 24. Um, we're, we're showing you kind of like the condensed way to set up, as a, to set up a reef tank. Um, but again, like I said, we saw some really nice corals at Worldwide. You guys got to stick around for that next week. Um, and we're also going to go down and tour their farm as well. Oh, yeah. So. Awesome. All right, I think it is time for... Ask Jess. <laughs> All right, guys. So every week we do an Ask Jess se segment so she can drop her knowledges to you. She's full of them. Um, she's been doing this a long time. She's, I don't even know how many thousands of tanks you've set up in your I, life. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's such a valuable resource. If you want to get your questions answered live, email Jess or ask Jess at waterboxaquariums.com. If we don't answer them live, she'll answer them through the email as well. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, Mail on in. Yeah. So the first right. question is from Anthony. He says, hey, Jess, what's the best way to get coralline algae to start growing? That's a good question. Yeah, it is. And it is not a fast process no matter what you use. I mean, there's yeah. additives on the market that are supposed to increase coralline by putting certain trace elements and extra calcium in there. You do need to be careful with those because that can whack, like make your levels of calcium and yeah. alkalinity go crazy. Um, you can basically kind of have it naturally come in on frags or other things. If you're getting live rock, a lot of times there may be a little bit of a beginnings there. Um, and I know back when I used to run stores, like we would actually, if there's ca like coral algae growing on something in one of the tanks, we can just kind of scrape it off if it's been growing for a while. Mm -hmm. We'd actually give little like crumbles of coral algae to people. And yeah. you kind of put it in yeah. the rock and it kind of seeds it. It is still a long process no matter how you look at it. It is not fast growing. Yeah. It will take a very long time until all yeah, your coral line is covered on everything. At least a year to cover or more. Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah. Um, good thing is when coral line algae covers your rock, other nuisance algaes are less likely to grow. Yeah. So it's a really beneficial thing, but it does take time. So seed it with some actual coral line. If you can find it like a frag or a piece of rock that has a little bit on it, it mm -hmm. all helps. You know, the thing about coral line algae is it's very aesthetically appealing in a tank. So, you know... One of the nice things about the Carib Sea rock we're using is it's already purple when you put it in there. Yes. Um, but if you're using another great rock like the Marco rocks, you know, you're going to want that, that coral line to grow over time. It does take time, like it you does. said, though. It takes a long time. Yeah. So especially if you have a bigger tank and lots of rock that didn't have any, just be patient and seed it in there however you can. Yep. Next question is from Mario. Um, he says, what's up, Jess? I hear that technically one can run a saltwater tank without a protein skimmer. Okay. I am deciding if I should get a NIOS protein skimmer and a NIOS reactor, or can the reactor be a substitute for the skimmer? I was wondering if the reactor could be used as a replacement for the skimmer or as a reactor. So can he use, only use a reactor, or should he also put the skimmer in there? So, well? I mean, okay, technically, can you run a saltwater tank without a skimmer? Yes. Um, is it recommended? No. Are you going to have a lot more trouble keeping your tank clean, um, healthy, and being able to stock a lot? You're going to mm -hmm. have a lot of issues with that without a protein skimmer. Um, they remove a lot of waste product. When you clean your skimmer cup and it makes you want to throw up because it stinks, <laughs> that's all the waste that is pulling out that would otherwise still be sitting in your tank. Yeah. Um, 
So I would never recommend a reactor in place of a skimmer, only in addition to. But yep. the number one most important thing would be that protein skimmer. And then add the reactor later for just better media filtration and stuff like that. But skimmer is one of the, I consider one of the most important equipment. Yeah, that's the one thing that I never, I always say don't skimp on your skimmer. Yeah, go over, yeah. like spend yeah. a little extra on your skimmer because it's really the thing that's removing the most waste product all day, every day. Especially when you. you have a sump, it's definitely worthwhile. Mm -hmm. This next question comes from Troy. He says, Jess, what else can you add as a cleanup crew besides hermit crabs and snails? Um, what type of snails? Also in your frag build, where does the auto top off go? So for inverts, um, as far as like your first round of cleanup crew, you really want to stick to snails and crabs, uh, crabs and snails, and like you don't want to go put cleaner shrimp or anything like that in. They're going to be a little bit more sensitive, and if you do have some kind of ammonia or nitrite spike, they're not going to fare well. Whereas um, crabs and snails generally make it, or if they don't, they're inexpensive. Yeah. Um, so you know, mix a hermit crabs and some snails to the glass, rock, and sand, and just leave it at that, like we did on the first week. Start adding shrimp when you start adding fish. Things are a little bit more stable. Yeah. Um, and then for the ATO, when we're down the sump, it's that front chamber. All the water box sumps have a reservoir for um, auto top off. And we have that there, and we use one of the XP Aqua um, Duetto ATO units. Yep, so the to run front it. right chamber in that mm -hmm. sump is a yep. good deal. All righty, so guys, that's what we have it for Ask Jess. If you guys, again, want to get your questions answered live here on Waterbox, live. Uh, email askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. And then Keenan's got some questions from Keenan's got some live the, questions. Some live questions to answer. Yeah, we have several questions. Um, this one's actually come up a couple times. Okay. What order should I add livestock to the tank? Is it coral first and then fish and vertebrates, or is, what order should it be? Um, I mean, technically, could you add corals before fish? Yes. I think it's better to do cleanup crew, fish, and then corals. Um, just because you're making sure that the tank can handle waste product, the worst thing you want to do is because corals don't make a lot of bio load. Is you go and put corals in first, everything's good, then you add a batch of fish and you realize that you have ammonia or nitrite, um, your corals are not going to take that very well. So it's better yeah. to kind of go in the sequence of hardiness and building up that biological. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. How many yellow tanks can you fit in that setup, the 105? Uh, one, maybe. Um, yellow tanks can technically be done in schools, but only in bigger tanks. Um, yeah. That one's 100 gallons, it's four foot. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend more than one, maybe two small versions of tanks in that size aquarium. Yeah. And yellows are a bit nasty. They get a little bit of an attitude. Um, so you put one or three of them in that size tank and they're gonna bully a lot of stuff. Yeah. So be careful, they've got a little bit of attitude even though they're smaller, one of the smaller tanks. Um, you know, something that's a little bit more peaceful would be like a yellow eye coal tank, uh, tamini tank, stuff like that. They don't mm -hmm. get as big and they're more peaceful and they're good grazers. Yep. Okay, uh, another question. This one's from Michael Messina. Will a cleaner shrimp get along with a pistol shrimp in a really small system? Um, <laughs> so it depends. Um, pistol shrimp can technically be dangerous if they do not have a goby friend. Um, so pistol shrimp and gobies belong together basically. And a pistol shrimp is blind, so he can't see. So if he doesn't have a goby, and that cleaner shrimp goes wandering into his little burrow, mm -hmm. he's gonna get snapped, and it's probably not gonna go real well for the cleaner shrimp, and it goes the same for little fish too. Um, then if you have a goby with your pistol shrimp, the goby keeps things out of the burrow. And because a pistol shrimp can basically just snap anything in half, yeah. Like instantly, it has a very strong snap. Um, so I wouldn't suggest it in a super small tank unless you have a goby with your pistol shrimp. Love it. I just yes. learned some new knowledge as you hey. guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Um, James Kings is asking, what's the salinity level on this tank? Uh, we keep uh, 1025 is where I keep pretty much all the reef tanks here. That's always been my part. It can go, you know, one to one point in either direction, technically, but I like 1025. That's where I've right. always done it. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, Kina says that's good. All righty. <laughs> so All guys, right. again, you guys stuck around until the end, and I congratulate that for, <laughs> congratulate you guys for that because we are giving away some stuff. I'm giving away, uh, it's the new thing here on Waterbox. We give lots of stuff away here yes, on the live. Yes, we do. We got these really comfortable new Waterbox uh, logo tees. 
Yeah, it's like tri blend um, or whatever is the most comfortable thing. Yeah, it's so I'm going to so give one of these guys away. <laughs> Keenan has already picked the winner. Again, if you guys join us every week, we pick the winner by people that are engaging with us, asking great questions, things like that. Yes. Um, and that, this particular t-shirt is going to a good friend on, here on YouTube. It is. Uh, Sean Lomberg, I believe that's how you say it. All right, congratulations, so congratulations for the Sean. Box shirt. Yeah, reach out to us. Either call our 800 number uh, tomorrow or email support at Waterbox Aquariums. They'll get you set up with that on uh, the appropriate size. And awesome. of course, guys, the, gift the last card. but not least, the water or uh, Worldwide <laughs> Corals. We'll start with W. Worldwide Corals uh, gift card. It's for $25. You can use it in store or online. All right, and drum roll for the winner. It is. On Facebook, the winner is Raj Keswani. Congratulations, Congratulations, Raj. That's awesome. Um, and you guys, we're giving away these gift cards for what, the next three weeks? Yeah. yeah. Every week we sponsor, we do Worldwide Corals Fish and Corals. Yeah, so there's four total episodes two for coral, two for fish, and each one has a gift card giveaway from Worldwide Corals, which is awesome for them to uh, contribute yeah. to the build because all of our livestock is coming from them, <clears throat> which is awesome. Yeah. That means we got some beautiful corals that are going to be coming our way. Um, and that is for next week. So next week is addition of corals. And we may, depending on just testing, get the Versa up and running. Uh, we'll yeah. just do that as it's physically needed, and we will show you through the Mobius app and all stuff. But um, congratulations to those winners. Next week's yeah. going to be a really fun show. Yeah, and you guys, you got, you got to tune in every week because this is this is a great build we're doing. But also, not only are we giving away the Worldwide, gift, Worldwide Corals gift cards, we're also surprising you with things like swag and other fun giveaways. It's so. always a good time here. It is. You just join us every Wednesday and you can win stuff and you'll get knowledges and yeah, get to Yeah, sometimes we drink tank. tequila. And, I know, not today. Uh, not today though. I, I saw a lot of comments that were saying, what, you know, what, what kind of tequila so, are you So, yeah, so we ran out of supplies and we didn't <laughs> we, realize it before. We weren't prepared. Um, so we will take donations of <laughs> yeah. um, tequila and mixers and things. Yeah, if you want to send your favorite tequila to 320 West Sable Palm Place, Longwood, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we will give you a shout out and a cheers on the show. If you'd like to send us alcohol, we'll happily accept it. Um, hopefully next week we are back to happy hour water box. <laughs> and we'll so, see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks guys. You're awesome. <laughs>